people like, imagine watching. you're trying to build an airplane. That's kind of like build, starting a business. And imagine it, it, you don't have a blueprint to build an airplane. But, I mean, you've seen a picture of it. You, like, you saw an airplane once. <laughs> like, you've seen a successful business. You know that they're real. It's possible to put metal together and right. have it float in the air, right? Like, technically, it's possible. So then you just get to hammering and whacking away on these aluminum. <laughs> and you're like, a rivet? What's a rivet? And so you're like, I think oh, you do it like this. That's how we build our businesses. And this is why you're going down the cliff. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> exactly. Off the cliff, right. Jump off the cliff and build the plane on the way down. Welcome to the Quick Talk Podcast with Joshua Latimer, where we discuss business, life, family, faith, struggle, fire, pain, and ultimately winning. It's time to take massive action. Look, I, I can't work harder on your life or business than you do. It's ultimately all on you. You know, God created all the food the birds would ever need, but he doesn't put it in their nest. You've got to go get it. Ten out of ten people die. So how about doing something today that actually matters while you still can? Hey everybody, welcome to the Quick Talk Podcast. Yes, I'm recording this on my phone, so the audio quality is not going to be great. But if you are listening to this show because you care about the audio quality rather than the deep, actionable, amazing business principles and advice, then you're probably listening to the wrong show because we're not an audiophile. I like to record when I'm inspired and I'm still here in Florida and I'm at this Funnel Hacking Live thing. I'm sitting with my buddy Brandon Vaughn in our rental truck. What's up, Brandon? What's up, Josh? And we just had this amazing conversation and we're going to try to recreate it, but there's no way it'll be as cool as what it really was when I wasn't recording, right? <laughs> but uh, we're talking about employees. We're talking about personality types. Um, it was really interesting because he had made me take this Myers-Briggs test mm -hmm. last night and I'm like didn't want to do it and he's like do it right now <laughs> and I did I t and they asked you all these weird questions and it's actually free you guys can do it, it was it 16 personalities.com or something mm -hmm. yeah I think so something yeah, like that breaks. google it and you can take it it's like 10 minutes and then it tells you everything about yourself in a way that really freaks you out and it was really accurate so then like we, I was reading Brandon's and then Derek. I was reading Derek's and then I sent it to my wife and then she sent me her results and we're like, what? No way. And she's like, no way. And I'm like, I know, right? It was crazy. Um, but I think it's it's interesting because um, when, when we're trying to build a company, it requires a team. And uh, this morning's session at Funnel Hacking Live was by Alex Sharfin, who's had, uh, I think, more than one $20 million business. He's in the inner circle with Russell, too, and he's just super smart. And he had this, this framework called the Billion, the Billionaire Code, or what's it called? Something like that. And it's talking about the stages of business. And it's kind of like the five stages of business that I talk about here, but deeper and more applicable to just kind of like any industry and stuff. And but essentially the bottleneck is your team is how do you get to this spot where you can eventually pivot and start developing people around you uh and why does why do some people never get there and uh i don't know what, what are your thoughts one of the things i think that is missing it was missing for us for a long time was actually very similar to a myers-briggs-esque test um, there's several of them out there. There's the disc test. Uh, you go to higher box. Patrick Vatlin has this really fantastic, um, you know, personality, uh, jobs, careers, assessment test. Um, one thing it, it made me realize is that we had a lot of people in our company that were very loyal. They loved our brand. They loved what we did. They loved everything about our company, but they weren't on the right seat in the mm, bus, right. you know, their personality, their personalities just didn't mesh up with that exact position that they were in. And in some cases, I mean, I, I had to learn some really, really hard lessons by putting people in the wrong position because it didn't match up with what their talented people, talents but were. you're setting them up to fail, right? Yeah. Yeah, you are. So, I mean, it takes, it, I think as, as you become more of a leader and have developed more of a CEO mindset, which for me was really, really difficult because I liked being friends with like all of my employees, you know, that was probably one of my, my biggest problems. Well, one of the personality traits in your thing, it, it wasn't like that you're a pushover, but it's deeply important to you that people like you and that you, they, they feel understood by you and like you really care about people. And that 
makes it hard when you have to drop the hammer or do a CEO thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it took it took uh, it took a lot of development and, and working with mentors and coaches to be able to overcome that. Um, you know, the, the thing about personality tests is you you're not you're not a box you don't fit inside of a box i mean they are fun to read because there's a lot of like really amazing similarities that make you say oh my gosh that that is me but there's also a lot of things that you can overcome and identify as weaknesses in yourself that you can train out of your personality Yeah, you said that last night you're like josh no no no, you're misunderstanding you can change your personality and i was like no way it's like hard-coded to your dna it is what it is and we like argued and you won and it was obvious because even as I look back at my life, <laughs> I was totally different when I was 18. Yeah. I had similar, uh, in, I can see how I was heading down the entrepreneurial path without realizing like there's undertones that are true, like that are solid, but like the way I was has changed a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Think about, think about year one when you first got into business Oh yeah. and you know, it's a, it's a combination of, you know, developing yourself into be a, a better leader and you know because at the end of the day that's what that's what your role is on the bus is you you got to be the leader you know mm-hmm. the guy driving the bus and making sure that all you know all of your employees keep their hands inside the windows and you know right. stop throwing paper balls at each other <laughs> and you know keep it down back there <laughs> but you know at the end of the day that's what your role is as as the the bus driver and i think that um there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there that don't understand how to drive a bus. They've never had the training. They've never had the coaching. They've never had the understanding that well, you've got I, to I check don't think your they have mirrors. The, no, I'm going with this analogy super deep. Okay? No, no, no. I think you're right. I think you're right. But I don't necessarily think that the reason people haven't thought this stuff through is because they're lacking training. It's because they're a bit too busy they're they're full of busy work doing all the wrong things like they're they're not stepping back creating space zooming out looking at their company and thinking about these things because they're inside of it running around like a maniac doing all the stuff yeah yeah i agree i agree absolutely and for every single person it's going to be different for me i'm speaking from personal experience that it was a it was a training issue because i didn't realize i didn't i didn't know what i didn't know until i started working with uh, working with a mentor, because it, do you, would you not agree that there are times in your business where you are so absolutely sure of a decision that you work with a mentor, you work with someone else, and they are like, "No, that was totally wrong. You you should not have done that whatsoever." <laughs> yes. And you're like, "I, I can't even trust my own self." Russell Brunson just did this to me in December. I had a very <laughs> right. detailed plan that I was certain he would be impressed by. Like when I presented it, we're doing a video chat. I'm like, kind of like, "This is awesome." Like I get to talk to Russell. Like he's the perfect guy that, like, he's gonna think I'm really smart, and then we're gonna be best friends. And so I lay it all out, and he's like. Listen, man, that's just everything about that's horrible. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's like, like and then he just like d- d- disassembled the entire thing and then reassembled it, and it looked very different from my original plan. But how grateful was I for that? That happened to me in conversation last night when I was sitting down talking to someone who was explaining, you know, what what I what I knew to be true and probably was like letting a little bit of my ego kind of get the better of me as far as like no this is this is the fact no you don't understand that the, my industry right. is specific you just don't quite get it and he was like no no, no you're just wrong yeah i was like oh man now i don't know what to believe well that you have to humble yourself if you're going to grow and learn yeah some of the most ego filled people i've met in, in our industry in home services have the smallest businesses and they're just like nope nope not in my market. It's different. Nope, 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 nope. And their their ears are closed. It's true. And they're just hurting themselves. I mean, I don't. That's a big problem. You know, one thing I think was so cool is when we were talking about the the Myers Briggs uh, personality tests. You know, we were obviously describing the differences between, you know, our spouses to our own personality types, mm-hmm. and how it's interesting that spouses, marriage mates, are typically attracted to their opposites. Mm-hmm. Some of the things that you think are so fascinating about this other human being because they have all these differences that are you know different than you and that's the stuff that actually attracts you and then after you get married sometimes those are those exact same things that end up driving you crazy because they're different (laughs) but i think that the people that that power through that and start recognizing what the other person's strengths are what your weaknesses are and how to kind of leverage that one of the things i was reading you know with regards to your personality profile is that 
like you were like I don't want to get too deep in no, deep do in it. dive into I, it. I'm but, an open book. But you're you expose me. You were you were the logician, right? You logician. were you were you they can were Google it if they want to know. Super all about it. super logical and you know in in breaking down the nuances and by by the way for you know it's just so your audience can understand we're gonna Bill Gates, Albert Einstein, ever heard of those guys? Um, that's Josh. <laughs> Josh is turning red right now, shaking his head. <laughs> I knew this would embarrass him. Yeah. But anyways, he, so he he has the logic side of things, and Ashley is, um, you know, the the bubbly entertainment personality, and really a lot more like in touch emotionally with those types of things, and each of those make fantastic parents together because you can draw upon the strengths and combine those strengths together. Right. And that's so powerful, man, because if I was a parent, I love the parent thing, but if, if I just raised my kids, it would be a dumpster fire <laughs> on, on, on 50% of what they need as human beings that are going to become adults. And it's, and I wouldn't even see where I was missing it. And then Ashley, if she, if she was just doing it on her own, the same would be true on the other end of the spectrum. That's it's the not the complete picture, yeah, right? I mean, I bring a lot to the table and she brings a lot to the table. But the problem is, is it took a long time for us to recognize that both of us weren't broken and that we were bringing different things to the table that either of us can really fully understand right. until you intentionally look at it. Right. And you know, like, and you value it. It's, it's, it's crazy what the similarities that you can draw between the business relationships that you have and how you structure your business and your team with marriages. There's so many similarities and uh, parables to that that I think it's important to realize, be humble enough that there are areas in your skill sets that you are weak in. There are. And are you going to be the guy that decides to be the do-it-yourself or gal that's, that decides to be the, the do-it-yourselfer and to try to figure it out on your own and power through something that is terrible it fit with your with, right. skill sets? Yes. Or are you going to go find that person that complements you know, that skill set and bring them onto your team and empower them to be able to take ownership over that small business owners are legendary at inflicting self-punishment without realizing it yes. because we continuously do tons of things that we suck at and uh and just think that the, the path is to keep doing it and just be to have more willpower and be stronger and or something you, you know what i'm saying when the real answer is if you can triple down on your god-given ability the thing that you're better at than anybody in the world your superpower which everybody has it, it what it, what would it do for your business if if almost all of your working hours were spent doing that thing right. in a way to grow and drive drive growth to your business it would be insanely powerful and not, not just for you like that's the path to create more opportunity for the people working with you too but they also need to stay in their lane but the problem is we don't even know that there are lanes number one and we don't know <laughs> who's supposed to be in what lane <laughs> <laughs> right you know, I, I remember I had an epiphany it was actually a turning point for me in my business um, back in the day I used to make my own t-shirts our own uniforms for our employees so i went out and bought a heat press oh yeah really bought a heat press you know they're <laughs> yeah. like the big fancy yeah. iron on thing yep. and i bought a vinyl plotter and i spent all this time plotting out my shirts cutting them weeding them which if you've never weeded a t-shirt vinyl that is. it's where you take this little tiny dental pick and you pick all of the reverse parts of the you know because it cuts it but it doesn't take the negative space out of the Why'd vinyl you do it because I was stupid. No, because but I mean, at the time, I save money. But you, you had to buy much, all that stuff. Do you, do you know how much money I saved? <laughs> do you know three to five dollars <laughs> per shirt? I don't know. So anyway, so this is. I, I did all the math in my head. You know, as far as okay, the plotter is going to cost this much. The heat press is going to cost this much. I, I only have to make you know uh, twenty five shirts for it, for me to break even on, okay. on the cost of it. And I'm going to be making like a hundred shirts this year. And I figured out all the math. I figured out all the material costs. But guess what? I didn't include opportunity costs. I did. Yeah, I didn't even include my own labor cost. Right. And when I sat down <laughs> right. and added it up, I was like. I'm making seven dollars an hour making shirts. <laughs> <laughs> like if I was to pay someone, oh, I'd be paying someone awesome. seven dollars an hour to make these shirts. Like that that was that was the 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 big epiphany where I stepped back. Cause I, I did all my I've done all my own design work, my website work, like my mark you know, all, all yes. of those things, and it was all under the guise of saving money because I, you know, pinch those pennies, pinch those pennies. The second I started letting go of those things, my business doubled. 
the second I stopped getting, clearing out all that cut, clutter and saying, here's, yes, I can design this stuff, but I'm going to hire a designer. Yes, I can make my own shirts, but I'm gonna, I want to, by the way, that was like the easiest decision on the planet when I realized right. I was making shirts for, I think actually it was less than $7. Well, this is like a fundamental problem with the, so many people in my community oh. is that they think to grow the business, they have to be, um, they have to pinch pennies or save a dollar here or be efficient. I was talking to someone and about be masters this. of all the skill sets too. Yes. Because it's cheaper if you do it yourself, you right. think, yep. which is, a, and you wind up with an inferior uh, outcome and it's not cheaper. Like for which, like by graphic the way, design. Which by the way is the thing that we loathe about the customers that just would rather pressure wash their own drive. Where we're right. like, you are so stupid. Right. You would not hire a professional <laughs> to do this. But yet in our own business, yep. we will sit there and do things that is not our profession and not our experience because we want to save money. Right. You want to save money and design your own logo it's so, and it looks like 1998 so clip art. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you're like, you have so much pride in the fact that oh. you did it, right? But this ties in nicely to Myron Golden's talk yesterday. Myron Golden is also in the inner circle, and he's just a really accomplished business person. He's done very, very well, and he's just really cool. I think he's amazing. I've mentioned him on the podcast in the past, and he gave this presentation. Now, he started out, he had polio as a kid, so he's got a brace on his leg, and he kind of hobbles around on it. And uh, so when he walks on the stage, he's hobbling around and he tells everybody his story. And but he he got married young, and he was said he was so poor he was he was pitiful poor, which is where you're so poor that poor people feel sorry for you. <laughs> right. And uh, he got a job uh, for six dollars an hour driving a trash truck. And he has this book called From the Trash Man to the Cash Man. <laughs> yeah, it's like such a catchy. It's book. so cool. But he he's talking about these four levels of value, four levels of making money. And when you were just talking, it reminded me of that first level, which was implementers. And so the, the lowest form of money making that you can possibly have is if you're the person doing the thing, right? If you're the person doing the thing, that's implementation. And the only thing you can use to implement something is your muscles. So if you look at like labor jobs, people that dig ditches or the, the people that work for the people, you know, your employees, they're, they're doing the deliverable. They're mowing the lawn, building the retaining wall, lifting the heavy thing, carrying it over there. So anyway, implementation is what we do with when we try to do everything. When he was doing the t-shirts, he was forcing himself to live in the lowest possible way to make money that exists on the planet. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. I mean, what did you think about that? Because he, he in summary, there's a ceiling of like maybe $80,000 a year in income for people that are implementers. Which is true. I mean, in the 80, the 80,000 are the ones that, you know, maybe like in the union trades, you mm -hmm. know, maybe you get the one or one or twos, they could you know, make six figures, yeah. and, you know, but they work trade, seven but, days a week or something. Right. Yeah. Lots of overtime. But yeah, that was the ceiling. That was the ceiling. But what was what I thought was cool was the the other three levels, was that you have this first level where you kind of cap out at 80k. But the the second, I'll just read through all four all, all mm -hmm. four levels. So there was the bottom one was implementation that uses your muscles. Uh, the second level, which is one tier higher, which society views as a higher value, because mm -hmm. it's not because what he said nature is he said, views it. This is like the natural order, right? Because what he said is that it's not it's not that what those people are doing are not important. Or because right. everything depends upon the muscles and the implementation. They're all important. Society depends upon that. Otherwise, it would not it would not function. Right. However, it places a higher value. Nature places a higher value on on the other levels. Which the number two level was unification, which is managers, people that can manage and prevent the implementers from killing each other. Just like kind of really, when you do the bus analogy, I view the driver of the bus as kind of like maybe your ops manager or your manager telling the kids in the back to stop throwing spitballs yeah. and stuff right. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's like semantics or whatever but yeah like if you're herding cats and running around and making sure people you know follow protocol and you're managing but th that has a cap on it too right he said you know if you're a manager at taco bell you make like maybe forty thousand, and if you're like a c-suite executive at boeing or something maybe you make two hundred and fifty thousand. but that's kind of like it right and then so the third level was communication, which is someone's natural gifted ability to be able to use their mouth to lead people and to identify, you know, that, that, that kind of leadership. It's not, it's not a manager, but it is that communication ability. And he referenced actors and, um, politicians and, and I've heard him do a deeper teaching on this cause he only had 26 minutes on stage, but he was talking about how the, 
one of the highest gifts on the planet. And this is a learned skill, by the way. So if you don't think you are this person, you can become this person. Um, you might be more inclined of it naturally, but these are learned behaviors. You can, you can ascend up through these four levels. But communication is the ability to use your mouth to make other people feel something or make them see something that's not there yet or make them believe something. If you do that, it's the sky is the limit. In fact, what does he have for the, the income limits for he was, he communicators? Was like, it, it, could, it starts at about 100000 but it can go up to $100 million. $100 million. And it's true. Yeah, annual annual income. Yep. And then the, the top tier that he had, which starts at a million dollars and goes up into the multi-billionaires, mm-hmm. um, he, he classified as imagination. These are people that have harnessed the power of mind and and money mm-hmm. as well. You know, they, they have the wealth to be able to um, invent the ideas and come up with these crazy schemes Big like visions. Walt Disney with Walt Disney World right. and huge visions, this empire of things, and also have the you know the capital to be able. But to they can it. literally see it before it exists. Yeah, they see it, and he told this story about Walt Disney. No, Russell did, but Walt Disney on his deathbed, someone interviewed him and laid in the hospital bed with Walt because Walt was really sick. And Walt spent the whole interview t- explaining to him what Disney was going to look like, like this property. You know, they have all these different areas, the Animal Kingdom and the Universal Studios, and they have Hollywood. I don't know what all it is, but he saw it before it was done. And uh, and then uh, to, to, to the best part of that story was years later when they had like had this grand opening on this amazing part of Walt Disney. One of the employees said, man, it's a shame Walt wasn't here to see this. And uh, another one of the executives said, no, you're wrong. He's, he saw it. He's always saw it. He saw it a long time ago. But, like, that's what I want to get to. I want to be that imagination level. I want to live there. And, and you have to use your brains and your money. And you know the Shark Tank guy, uh, the mean guy, the bald guy that's always mean to everybody? Yeah. He always says he like wants Kevin. to send his money out and it has to come home with friends. <laughs> <laughs> when he's going to invest, he's like, I send my little dollars out and they, and they walk around and then they come back with friends. That's what they do. <laughs> but he's operating, whether you like him or not, has no bearing on any of the truth of this at that level. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. it's fascinating. But we're all running around cleaning carpets, mowing lawns and trying to sharpen the, our blades ourselves for our lawnmower because we save $6 when we need to be ascending up to from, from implementer to manager then to communicator and then to imagineer, right? Right, right. Yeah, and I think and I think that that's the that was the hardest rut for me to get out of was down in that implementer stage. Um, it, you had to you have to force yourself out of it. You have to force yourself and take all these because I think getting out in, out of each one of those levels requires a massive leap of faith that you can do it, and it requires the vision to be able to look ahead and say, mm. yeah. I, I will make this work. I, 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 I have no option. I, I'm just going to make it work. And having that mindset it, it, to me is everything. And that's what he was kind of, you know, in, that's the whole purpose of his thought. That is why podcasts like this change people's lives. That's why the internet has changed people's lives. Imagine 30 years ago, everybody, you want, you have like this rough idea of you'd like to have this big business. You, you picture yourself as successful, but you don't know the path. And so when Brandon's saying it's a leap of faith, it's absolutely true because you're stepping into the unknown. You haven't done it before. There's not life experience to kind of reassure you. Uh, but with the internet, with the free resources available, we're literally telling you what to do. We've both had a lot of success. We're at an event learning from people who are far beyond anything me and Brandon have accomplished, and they're telling you step one, step two, step three, step four. Now, you still have some risk and, and all that, but you have literal validation and a, and a roadmap to do it. So if you choose to, you can pivot right now. You can pivot tomorrow morning. You can wake up and say, I'm not making my own work shirts anymore. I'm not doing it. Yes, it makes me nervous. I don't want to waste the extra $6 a shirt, but I'm, I'm going to trust that these people that are teaching me this stuff are right. And, and you can start to ascend up. That's amazing. If you can't make it in business in America in 2018, how utterly screwed were you at any other time period in history? Well, I don't know. So I'll play devil's advocate. No, I was passionate. I, I, I felt it. Fake validating. I felt it. <laughs> I'll, play, I'll play devil's advocate with this point. 
we lay, we live in an information age that is almost too much information because you have so many different places where information is coming at you with differing opinions and different mm-hmm. views and different suggestions and different philosophies that I think that a lot of people, myself included, can suffer from analysis paralysis where there's so many choices and so many paths and so many different people telling you what's the best way that in the information age, now anyone can be an expert if they have a keyboard in front of them because you don't know what their business is like behind the scenes. That's true. You don't know what, you know, the, you don't know if they're, they're showing you their highlight reel. They're showing you all the, all the highlights, but they're not showing you that their profit and loss is, you know, if 3% net profit <laughs> right. for the entire year right. and they're dead up to their eyeballs oh, with, yeah. you know, with regards to their company. And I think that's a really, really big challenge that is a real problem that business owners face right now is it's that true. there is no real clear path. I call it the keyboard warriors. Yeah. And I, I also mentioned how the the world is not suffering from a lack of opinion. I don't think we have information overload. My opinion is that we have opinion overload. The hard part is parsing yeah, out. That's true. Yeah, that's, that's a, a big, that's a yeah, mind that's, bomb, right? That is, yeah. But because I've talked about this in a previous episode recently and but it's, it's hard to parse out competent quality advice from an opinion because it all kind of looks the same uh, when you're looking at a list of different things. And I, the analogy I use is someone will go into a forum online and they'll ask a question, should I buy this piece of equipment? Should I hire the employee? Should I fill in the blank with a thing? Right. And it's like, 500. And I said, Facebook needs to have like a Carfax thing next to people's profile picture next to a comment where you can like click it. And it's like, are these guys verified? You're good. You're good. Do this. This guy's got it. He's, he's legit, but you don't know. Dude, that's a genius idea. I know. There's two things I just, took from that sense because you dropped two huge value bombs the first one was we don't live in an information age we live in an opinion we don't age. have information overload we have opinion overload we, okay i want to print that on a shirt i have a machine to do that at home do it yourself <laughs> to save money that shirt out <laughs> let me tell you <laughs> and then, yeah and then the second and the second part is just uh we need to have a company that pre-vets people's experience and you know uh, not status. What's the word I'm looking for? Pre- competence pre- for, for that. Pe- yeah. Because you don't have to have some huge gajillion dollar business to competently <laughs> answer a question, <laughs> but you do have to have already done that thing successfully. So if it's a, a should I buy the equipment and it's someone that hasn't even invested in it yet, they're still going to comment on your post because they want to be heard, but don't listen to them. <laughs> I think I think what drives a lot of people to do that, and this is probably a personality type thing again, probably. drives a lot of people to do that is that people, people will downplay others and will bash on others because it makes them feel good about the decisions that they've chosen in their life. It strokes their own ego. There's no other purpose for bashing others and for talking down on what someone else's decisions are, except it just validates in their own head that I I made a good choice. Mm -hmm. I made a good choice. Yep. And I'll tell you, you want you guys will find this out, but if you want to change your life, and you start thinking positive and you start making positive posts on Facebook and you start naming your shot saying, I'm going to double my business. I'm going to do this. You start living like that. What happens is in a sea of five foot 10 people, you become five foot 11 and this, the crowd will try to pull you back down. Uh, and, and I've experienced it. You know, you try to help, you try to serve. And what, what, what happens is you, without meaning to, you alienate the people who are in a rut and aren't willing to change, who have shame because they're not living anywhere near their potential. And so instead of themselves being convicted and changing and going for it and aligning themselves with these ideas, they want to try to disrupt your thing, right? If they can keep you at their level, then, then everything's okay. It's, it doesn't expose their lack of growth. Um, but that's changing, man. There's a lot, there's a movement happening in the service industry. I agree. There's so much, like there's a lot of young people coming in. They're growing companies quickly. Some of the old schools of thought in terms of like equipment or process or sales, all that stuff's changing. And there's a new generation of people coming up, man. They're doing stuff. And even the people you were at the Automate Grow Sell experience, these people are hungry. And they, it's not perfect, but they're hungry and they're doing it and they're taking risk and they're like networking and they're forming mastermind groups and they're buying information. And in summary, I wanted to mention one more thing that I got from Funnel Hacking Live so far that I thought was huge. And the advice was this, get yourself one mentor. And it ties in perfectly to what Brandon was just saying. It's not that um, you might have three people that are competent, and all three of them will give you a different answer. And it's not about finding the perfect answer. It's about laying a path for yourself and then walking down the path. 
And if you have one mentor, and this is really what I did with with Russell, right? So I'm like, I was like watching the Gary Vee video, watching this and watching internet marketing things. And I'm on email lists for for these software companies. I'm trying to piece together what's the path for me to take Send Gym to 10 million? How do I do this? I haven't done it before. You know, it's noisy, right? It's noisy out there. And I, 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 I just don't do that at all. All I've been doing for the last six months is doing what Russell says. doesn't mean everything that he says will be perfect, but I'm going to be... 50 steps further ahead because I have clarity and I'm executing on the clarity, right? Yeah. Well, you know, that's a, that's that, um, Dr. Theodore Rubin. Yeah. He's quoted in this book that I read. It was called overcoming indecisiveness. And what it said is it said it, the failure of a decision has little or nothing to do with the actual choice mm. that you make. The failure of the decision is directly proportional and traceable to lack of dedicated commitment. So when someone makes it, you know, is, is vacillating between two decisions and then goes with one, but then doesn't commit to it. Right. It's like, they're not sure because they're second guessing. They're, they're scared of screwing it up. Right. Yeah. And so it, it just oftentimes it doesn't really matter what you do. You just need to take the action and you got to commit to it because oftentimes that's what's going to make it successful is you committing to it. You can still pivot and make little changes and things to your plan. But if you're going to say, I'm going to test this out, go all in with the test. And if it doesn't work, no problem. Move on to the next thing. I mean, you and I, how many times have we failed at testing out things that we thought would be brilliant? I personally haven't failed, <laughs> oh, but I, I understand what you're saying. <laughs> oh, I was almost there. <laughs> no, constantly. That's the thing. Is And actually, my personality type, my biggest weakness is an extreme fear of failure. And it can paralyze you. And I've known that about myself for a long time. I am like way overthink stuff, believe it or not, right? Because I have to act really awesome on the show, so I can't ever appear weak in any way. <laughs> um, but I do make decisions, and I make quick ones. And I learned a long time ago that the goal isn't to make a perfect decision, it's to make a decision mm -hmm. at all. Make make one. Mm -hmm. Try it out. Test yep. it out. Make a decision tomorrow and, that you've been mulling over for a year and just go with it. Uh, and like Brandon's point, I, you said a lot of fancy words when you were unpacking that, but... It was a quote. It was not my fancy words. No, it's a quote you're of a trying to be cool. Like, <laughs> I get it. No. But I think your point was, is... Um, oh, shoot. I lost my train of thought. I don't well, know what I was going to say. Uh, my, my, my point was, is that... You know, you if you have two decisions, it's like dieting, right? You, you there's a variety of diets out there. Mm -hmm. They'll have the science, the validity, you know, the, the testimonials to back up every single one of them. But it's not true. All, all, di all diets work if you can commit to them. All yeah. of them do. If you can, it, that's. But that is the problem. My personal favorite. It doesn't favorite matter which one you choose. If you can't commit to it, you'll you'll fail. That's it's profound. It's simple. They, most of the most powerful stuff is simple. It's that entrepreneurs especially have a unique ability to overcomplicate the most simple thing ever. Um, Cause it's but really my favorite fun. diet is the tapeworm diet. Have you heard of that? <laughs> the tapeworm <laughs> diet. <laughs> you just eat a tapeworm and it does all the work. It's amazing. It's true. It works too. It does. <laughs> it does work. Oh, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed our random conversation. We're having so much fun. And all I want to do is add value to you, value to your life. I want you to get what you want. You don't have to have a business the size of Brandon's. You don't have to compare yourself to other people. In fact, you shouldn't. It's all a waste of time and you won't be happy when you get there anyway if you do that. What I do want you to do is clearly define your why, your mountaintop, your outcome. I want you to achieve it. I want you to move towards it imperfectly. And I want you to get in community with us, whether it's in the Automate Grow Sell Bootcamp or you join the free Facebook group, The Growth Vault. Be around like-minded people. Start calling your shots and go for it because we're, we're here to support you. We're not going to tear anybody down because uh, you can do this. There are a lot of people significantly dumber than you listening to this who have already achieved 10 times more than what you've achieved so far. Wrap your head around that, right? Yeah. It's because they're taking action and they're just imperfectly making decisions. I also want to invite all of you to make sure that you pop your email address in over at supermarketingcourse.com. I'm going to be doing a teaching webinar approximately a week from today. Uh, that's going to blow your mind. I'm going to teach you. I'm not just going to show you what's in the super course because that's important because we're going to release that and launch it and you're going to want that. But I'm going to teach you exactly why. And these are simple principles too, by the way. But why is it that some businesses do more revenue in a month than most people do in an entire year? What are those little differences? And there's some mental things or some financial things or some understanding of numbers things. I'm going to break it down, demystify it for you and share that with you. But you do need to pop your email in there uh, at supermarketingcourse.com. It's going to be amazing. 
Brandon, what, what do you think about the Super Course while I got you? I think it's incredible. I mean, they, I, I think the coolest thing about it is you get the perspective of about how many teachers do you have on there? 14 15, or 15? 15 or 16, yeah. Yeah, so you have all these different perspectives, and every single one is kind of an expert in a little niche or um, have a really unique perspective, but it's all one huge overarching strategy that for me, uh, I wish you would have made this six years ago yeah. because, it, uh, I mean, the, the, the principles, my mind is melting as far as how much information and value in there. It's tremendously, tremendously valuable. I mean, honestly, words don't describe it. Well, it's, it's like imagine you're it. trying to build an airplane. That's kind of like build, starting a business. And imagine it, it, you don't have a blueprint to build an airplane. But, I mean, you've seen a picture of it. You Like, you saw an airplane once. Yeah. Like, you've seen a successful business. You know that they're real. It's possible to put metal together and right. have it float in the air, right? Like, technically, it's possible. So then you just get to hammering and whacking away on these aluminum. <laughs> and you're like, a rivet? What's a rivet? And so you're like, I think oh, you do it like this. That's how we build our businesses. And this is why you're going down the cliff. <laughs> <Right>. Exactly. <laughs> the cliff, right. Jump off the cliff and build the plane on the way down. Well, would it be helpful? Not perfect because it's still hard to build an airplane, especially by yourself because you're in the implementer stage. But I digress. <laughs> it's hard, but it's be, it would be a lot easier if you had an actual blueprint from the Boeing Corporation saying, here's how you you know deconstruct a reverse engineer and here are the steps to build an airplane, Right. Am I, am I making sense? Come on, people. And if you are getting free, massive, epic value out of this, can you give me a digital high five? Like, so here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mock it. Ready? That's me high fiving you right now because we need to grow the audience by 10 times this year. And don't be uh, an information hoarder that's greedy. We put these out every day. You need to share them with the people around you that need this information. That's you being generous and you, the universe will reward you for your generosity. So share it, like it, give us an iTunes review. Please, please, please post a link to your favorite episode in a Facebook group, tag people in it that need to hear it, go on LinkedIn, make a, do something awesome. I will so send you a cookie or something, or at least give you a digital high five. I, I appreciate your time, Brandon. My pleasure. I think we got to get back in here and uh, get some more mind bombs going for ourselves. What do you think? Let's do it. Let's do it. Hey, listen, take care, everybody. God bless. Hey, thanks for hanging out, friends. And from all of us here at the Quick Talk Podcast team, we hope you love today's show. We hope that you were inspired to become a doer and not just a listener. Apply what you've heard today in your own business and watch things change for the better. Lastly, remember that all the money in the world can't save your soul. Seek first the kingdom of God, my friends. We'll see you next time. For more information about the Quick Talk Podcast or Joshua's other businesses, visit our website, quicktalkpodcast.com. Have a blessed day.